Just give me a pint to your cheapest. So, what brings you to our small town here, Mr... Pilgrim. Billy Pilgrim. Just blown through town. Not much worth talking about. Fair enough, fair enough. I'll be right back with you. Can I buy you a drink? Excuse me? <laughs> well, I always love a new face. And you seem like one of the more interesting ones to come through. Um, sorry, no, I already got one coming. Right. Did you know that I am the most beautiful person in all the aisles? Um, no, I didn't. <laughs> well, I am. I didn't think so, but Lord Henry saved me from the boring life I'd led before. Congratulations, I suppose. Yes, yes. If only Basil were alive to see how far I've grown with Henry's guidance. So it goes, I guess. Oh, thanks. Well, perhaps I should go. They can't live without someone to teach them how you see. Ah, I see you've met Mr. Gray. Well, met might be a bit of a stretch. Yeah, he's certainly one of our more eccentric regulars. Makes you think. About what? He thinks he's the cause of his own unhappiness, but as the Trafalgarians taught me, he's only experiencing events that are happening around him. Yet he remains convinced that someone changed him to grant him this power. He seems to have lost his mind in the negative events of his life. People want their lives to self-destruct, you can't stop them. Just sit back and enjoy the show. So, what's that guy's problem? Who? Montag? Well, besides being the reason we haven't had a fire in the fireplace over there, he pays his tab and doesn't bother anyone, so most of us just leave him alone. Hello? <laughs> No, I'm not burning anything. What would make you say that? How'd they find that out? Oh, so it's my fault now that it's gone south. Well, you are all secure in your basement. Forget it. I'm not gonna get arrested for this. Get someone else to... Aha. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I can do it. But is there any other way? Of course. Yeah, I can do that too. Here's for my tab, and then some. I won't be needing it anymore. So, how's Marla been doing? Last I saw, your neurotic girlfriend was chasing me out of her apartment after looking in the freezer. Thanks, by the way, for making soap out of her mom behind my back, because now she thinks I did it. <laughs> so that's my fault? You weren't supposed to let her see that. Well, you were supposed to let me know what you're doing so I don't get killed by one of your plans. Never mind, Marla, for now. I'm working on something big now. Really big. Bigger than you and I will ever be. Which is? I'm calling it Project Mayhem. Cool name, right? We need more than to fight clubs to free men's minds. And this is how we'll start. I have a bad feeling you got me tied up in this somehow. The only thing I need you to do right now is to make some paper copies of the club rules. Let's say, ten for starters. And why not just do it yourself? You're the one who works in the office and I run the clubs. Simple as that. Just take some time between your afternoon naps and run the copies. 
What if someone sees their rules? We'll need recruits. <laughs> recruits? What the hell are you planning? That's not important at the moment. I, I just need you to make the copies for me. What if I refuse? Then I'll make you print the copies. Why are you being so resistant? Resistant? Because last time you did something behind my back, Marla almost killed me. You weren't supposed to wake up that early. I still had to boil it, but you... You guys need another round? Yeah, the same. Sure thing, give me a sec. Hey, how's it going? Oh, uh, good, I guess. <laughs> You're not gonna uh, try to buy me a drink like the other guy, are you? Guessing you met Dorian? Yeah, that guy's a creep. Uh, no kidding. So, you military? Yeah, me and the guys over there were in Nam together. Air Force, or...? We all got conscripted into the army in 67. Yeah, the draft got a lot of guys. You were drafted? No, I enlisted uh, some time before that. Ah, you are one of the smart ones to pick up a safe unit. Kids who got drafted ended up as cannon fodder. Where'd you serve? Um, Western Front, World War II. Boy, you don't look a day over 20. There's no way in hell you were in the Western Front. 42nd Platoon, 5th Division. Got the scars to prove it. Yeah? Scars from your mama hitting you for being an inconsiderate little prick. You have no idea what war is like. I was a German POW. I swear, I'm not joking. Do you even know what POW stands for? Hell, I was a POW from the time my number was called on TV. Once you're conscripted, there's no way out. Of course, I tried the run, made it to within two miles of the border. And you know what? I still couldn't escape. Because I had everyone in the country screaming for my service, for me to give my life, my life, to the men in Washington who didn't want to get their polished little shoes all muddy. Don't you dare try to patronize me with your lives. When I was your age, I... Hey, O'Brien, take these back to the board before you get someone else killed. All right. Sorry about that. He hasn't been the same since now. Hey, I've seen worse. What'd you say to make him so upset? I don't know. I said I was in World War II, and then after that, he just... Really? World War II? Yeah. Landed in France after Normandy had been taken. Of course, our defenses were not that great, so the Germans bust through the line and ended up capturing us. POW? Yeah. Five months in Dresden. Well, until our guys made the moon of that place. After that, I went home and they gave me an honorable discharge. I was stationed in South Italy from 1943 through 44. That's why I'm doing the whole squad. Air Force? All safe in your plane 3,000 feet above the bullets? We least infantrymen have the option of wearing camouflage. When my bombers were in there, there was no way to mistake me for a bird. Unless they were hunting with AA turrets. Well, guessing you managed to at least survive some flights. I don't even remember how many now. Our colonel kept on raising the mission requirements so they looked better on the evening post. I got shot at flight after flight so that bastards could get his picture in the paper. That's why I went AWOL. You just can't run away from life. Events like that happen and you just can't run away from things that are destined to happen. It's better than being shot at in a plane. Either way, someone's trying to kill me. Might as well be on my own terms. But there's no one shooting at you now. At most, you get locked up for a year or two, but then that's got to be better than running your whole life. Oh, no, no, no. Even if I turned myself in, they'd still be trying to kill me. They don't care who I am or what I think. They'd kill me all the same. Who? Damn. So you're saying that everyone, even me, is trying to kill you all the time? Is it so strange? Yes, it is. If I were going to kill you, it'd be done already. That's it. In fact, I know what I'm going to die. It's, uh, soon, no. Why not run? Why not save yourself? You have the ability to influence your own destiny. You're right, I do. But only in the fact that I can influence my ability to accept that I don't have any influence. I've learned this as I've passed through time. Life is 
my entire life has been dictated by what I was supposed to be. What was written would happen. If you believe a word of what you just said to me, then there is no hope for you. The Truffle and Dorans have taught me well. What is, is. People die, so it goes. That's no way to live. Who are you? Who are any of you to think that you have any influence over your life? It's the greatest farce of them all. Look at you! Whatever conversation you're having in your head, the other side is obviously winning. But you think you're still in control? And you. The war would have happened whether or not you begged for your life. So what's the thinking and hitting yourself over the head with regret? And you. You think you can just run away from control? Like you said, someone's always trying to kill you. And no matter how fast or far you run, fate's always going to have its gun pointed at your head. But that's what makes your death worse not realizing that there's a gun in the first place. And if you protest, if you think death is this terrible thing, you've not understood a word I just said. You packed my bag last night, pre-flight. I miss the earth so much, I miss my wife.